2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror, seeing the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would speak to us today, that we would understand freedom from your eyes, and that we would be transformed from one state of glory to another to be more and more free in Christ, and to be the kind of people that help other people find freedom in Christ. It's through Christ we pray. Amen. Historically, we as Americans have always valued our freedom. Fourth of July has always been a time of great celebration. In fact, when that Frenchman, Alexis de Tocqueville, came over to the United States, he was observing, he was able to observe a Fourth of July celebration in Albany, New York in 1831. He said, it seemed that an electric current made the hearts vibrate. In other words, there's something in the American spirit that is bound up with the spirit of liberty. And so that's why Fourth of July matters so much to us. And it always has. I love that old story that is told of the young 21-year-old Massachusetts scholar that was trying to interview as many of the survivors of the Revolutionary War as he could. This was 1843. And finally, he came to this Yankee by the name of Captain Preston. Captain Preston had served at Lexington and Concord that April day in uh, 1775. And so this young man asked Captain Preston, Sir, what made you go fight in this war? And the elderly gentleman kind of looked at the young man a bit confounded that somebody would ask such an obvious question. He said, is it because you felt oppressed? He said, no, never felt oppressed. He said, well, because of like you felt oppressed by the Stamp Act. He said, never bought one. Well, maybe you felt oppressed because of the tea tax. He said, nope, never dro drank a drop of it. Well, maybe was it because you were inspired by the writings of Harrington and others and their cause for independence? He said, never heard of them. In fact, we only read the Bible and Watts' hymns and psalms. Well, then, he said, what was the matter? Why did you fight? He said, young man, we had always been free, and we meant to be free always. And those red coats meant that we shouldn't. Always free, free always. And so that has been in the spirit of America from the very beginning. We've always honored, it's always held an honored position for us, even though we applied it uh, hypocritically, even though we didn't apply it as broadly as we should have initially. There was something viral about freedom that was embedded in the foundation of, this, of the body of this nation that served to, to infect the whole nation as time went by. From the beginning, we've been driven by freedom in a way that distinguish us from other revolutions. The French Revolution wasn't driven by freedom. The Russian Revolution wasn't driven by freedom, um, which is part of the reason why our Constitution was set up in a way to outlast all uh, those constitutions that have been written since then. Our cry is to be the land of the free. But the question is, where does freedom come from? You ever consider that question? Um, I, I read a good book. If, if there's a book that you want to read about freedom sometime, uh, The Theme is Freedom by Stan Evans is a wonderful book where he talks about this, religious religion, politics, and the American tradition. Evans does not consider himself, did not consider himself a devout Christian by any means. And yet he said when he graduated from Yale, he started to ask the question of himself, where does freedom come from? And he realized 
if I listen to, to just everything that I've been taught, I would think that the free, that freedom came from like the enlightenment. And so I decided, I thought that doesn't make sense at all. And so he said, I decided to examine historically where does freedom come from? And he said, I came to the conclusion that what most people have been taught is wrong. He said, freedom has not come from the ancient Babylonians or from the Romans or from Locke or Hume. That freedom, he said, is found in the Bible. As he studied history, he said, you find freedom in Scripture. And it goes right back to what Jesus, what the Bible would say, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Alexander Hamilton understood that. One of our founders wrote these words. He said, the sacred rights of mankind are not to be rummaged for among old parchments or dusty records. They are written as with a sunbeam in the whole volume of human nature by the hand of divinity himself. Freedom does not come from human beings. Freedom does not come from our past. Freedom ultimately comes from God. And so, again, it's why I love what Paul says in, so clearly in 2 Corinthians 3, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Do you understand how profound, how brilliant, how counterculture that is for us today? See, doesn't it make sense? Freedom demands form. I am not free to do whatever I want and then still think that I'm free. I can, I'm not free just to drive my car wherever I want, whichever direction I want, at whatever speed I want. If everybody lived that way, then we would not have freedom. We'd have chaos. You know, you are free to do whatever you want with your fists, but the freedom of your fists ends at the tip of my nose. For us to have freedom, there must at the same time be form. There is no such thing as absolute freedom. And again, the brilliance of the Bible is what is the form that gives us freedom? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Again, you, you see it in Jesus' brilliance when he's asked the question, what's the greatest commandment? And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment, but the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then get this. What's the form that defines love? All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. See, we are only as free as our boundaries allow us to be free. And what are the boundaries that give us freedom? The boundaries are love. And what is it that defines the boundaries of love? It's not our emotion. It's not our desires. It's the Bible. It's the spirit of Jesus, which is the spirit of love. Edmund Burke, the um, British parliamentarian during the Revolutionary War, said it so well, he said, men of intemperate, he said, it's ordained in the eternal constitution of things. And in other words, it, this is just how it works in life. It is ordained in the eternal constitution of things that men of intemperate minds cannot be free. Their passions forge their fetters. In other words, we are only as free as our boundaries allow us. And if our passions form our boundaries, they're going to form our chains. Just ask the person who's an addict to drugs. Just ask the person who lost their marriage to an affair. Just ask the kid who got an F for cheating on the test. Just ask the person who was the drunk driver and lost their driver's license. Men of intemperate minds cannot be free. Our passions forge their fetters. So the only way to be free is the Spirit of the Lord. Our generation is losing its freedom even as we speak because passions are increasingly unbridled. 
people increasingly follow their impulses unrestrained by a sense of good or evil, right or wrong, truth or falsehood. Where does freedom come from when people live by the boundaries of love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Where do we find those boundaries? In God's word. So the next question is, where are you going to look to to find freedom? Where will you look? To Jesus or somewhere else? Again, we see brilliance in Jesus when it comes to freedom in Matthew chapter 6 when he says, no one can serve two masters since he will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve God and. Now, at this point, I would quote perhaps the most brilliant philosopher of our day, Dylan, Robert. Bob Dylan had that wonderful song back in the 70s, you got to serve somebody. You got to serve somebody. It doesn't matter who you are, president of the United States or a pauper, everybody's got to serve somebody. In other words, there's no such thing as absolute freedom. There's only freedom to choose your master. Hear me again. And I'm not the only dis pers first person to say this. There is no such thing as absolute freedom. The only freedom we have is to choose the master we will serve. And as soon as you choose your master, you've just chosen the amount of freedom that you'll enjoy. That's what Jesus was saying when he says, nobody can serve two masters, but you have to serve some master. Your freedom will be determined by your master. So ask yourself, what master will you choose? Which master is worthy of your devotion? Which master is most interested in your freedom? What master will you serve? Which master is able to actually give you freedom? I guess, though, the bottom line question ultimately is, which master is really the Lord of all, master, all authority in heaven and earth. Fourth of July really raises the question for all of us, are you free? We live in a playboy philosophy generation that says to be free is to be free from restraint, to be free from discipline, to be free from other people, to be free from the Bible, to be free from God. Jesus says, nobody can serve two masters, but where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I pray today you will rededicate yourself to freedom in Christ. And just as importantly, who do you know right now who's still a slave to sin? The guilt of sin, the penalties of sin, because Jesus is not their master. Is there somebody that Jesus is calling you to help set free this week? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We believe that that freedom is your gift. Freedom matters so much to you that you gave it to freedom to Adam and Eve in the garden and risked the world being ruined. Freedom matters to you so much that you actually take the risk of allowing people to be separated from you so we could have the freedom to choose to love or not to love. So may we value freedom, but above all, may we see that Jesus is the master and the only one who can give us freedom. And may we live as free people, making our commitment to go set people free with Jesus, where the spirit of Jesus is, there's freedom. Through Christ I pray, amen. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a great 4th of July weekend.